Well, here's a video I never thought I would end up having to do. Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron, and in case you haven't heard, Sony has now announced that they are going to be shutting down the PSP, PS Vita, and the PlayStation 3 digital stores. Which means that if there is anything that you want to buy on those stores, this is the only opportunity that you have. This is your final moment, the final countdown has begun, we're all on the ship trying to make our way towards the exit, and the red light is flaring, and the countdown has begun. So if there's anything that you want on those stores, this is your opportunity. So I wanted to come in here today, and I wanted to just go through a couple of my suggestions. I looked through the PlayStation 3 store, I looked through the Vita store, through the PSP store, and I came up with a list of games that I thought were worth mentioning. A couple of games that I thought should probably be brought to some people's attention. Which, let me go ahead and clarify something right now. This is not a list of the best games on the PlayStation 3. No, not at all. Not even close. In fact, I'll go ahead and admit right now, some of the games that I have on this list aren't even good. They're not very good games. There are definitely some good games on here, but there are a couple of games that you're going to see me mention and you might think, why on earth are you telling people to buy that? I'm not really telling people to buy this. I'm just saying, if you have any interest, this is your final opportunity because what this list today is, is that these are games that you can either only get on the PlayStation 3 store, or you can only get on the PlayStation 3 store and maybe say the Xbox store. There's a couple of games out there that I saw that everybody was saying you should go and check this out, but there were games that were also available on Steam. I know most people who play the PlayStation also have a Steam account. They were also available on the Switch. I know most people who play the PlayStation, they might also have a Switch as well. But when it comes to PlayStation and Xbox, that's the big divide. That's the one where a lot of people just pick one of them. So if you only have the PlayStation, that means that these games are going away for you as well. And there are a lot of other games on this list today that you can indeed get physical versions of. However, at this point, the physical versions are going for so much money, you're way better off just getting the digital versions. But before we actually get into the list, I know there's a couple of questions that some people might have about the PlayStation Store shutting down. And I will be honest with you guys, there's still a lot of questions that I myself have about this. But I want to come in here and tell you guys what we know so far. If you are completely caught up and you already know everything that you need to know about these stores shutting down and you just want to get to the list, then I will put the time code down below. You can just jump ahead right to that. But for the people out there who have questions, what this means is that, yes, obviously, you will no longer be able to buy any games for the PlayStation 3, the PlayStation Portable, and the PlayStation Vita on the PlayStation Network. However, any games that you do already own, you will be able to continue downloading them, so don't look at this list and think, oh jeez, I gotta play this thing within the span of just a couple months, or do I need to download everything that I want to play in the future onto my PlayStation and just keep it there forever? No, 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 any games that you have already bought, you don't have to download them now, you will be able to continue downloading them in the future because PlayStation is going to keep those games on their servers. It does seem kind of weird to me that PlayStation is going to keep these things on their server, meaning it's still taking up space, it's still stuff that they have to allot space and money for in order to keep them around, and yet they are going to just take away the ability for them to continue making money off them by allowing people to buy them when that wouldn't take any extra work on their part, but hey, what do I know? I don't want to get too ranty on you guys about this whole thing, but it does seem just kind of crazy to me that they're going to keep this stuff around their servers, they're just going to take away your ability to continue buying these things from them. It really also kind of feels weird to me that PlayStation has not come up with any kind of a way for us to just play these things on the PlayStation 5. I know a lot of people, when the PlayStation 5 was announced, they said, oh, they're going to make it so you can play all of your old PlayStation 3 games on there. And I just thought to myself, uh, PlayStation has not announced that at all. You guys are making up a fanfic right now. However... I did not expect the PlayStation 5 to be able to be backwards compatible with disc because that's hard drive. You have to install new readers into the PlayStation 5 in order for it to be able to read those old discs. But it is shocking to me that they haven't made a way for us to be able to play the old digital games on there because that's just a software update. You just install some kind of an emulator on there. I mean, it's literally just what the Xbox is doing. It really does feel to me like someone at Sony should be working on this, which that's something that I will bring up right now. They might actually be working on this. I don't want anybody out there to come in here and say, oh, okay, there's a rumor going around, so that means we're safe. 
but I did feel like I should share this rumor with everyone. This guy got buried in the news, but as soon as it was announced that PlayStation was going to be shutting their stores down, there was another announcement that went out that apparently months ago, and they didn't say anything until just now, but apparently months ago, Sony ended up patenting this technology that would allow them to install trophies on emulated games, and a lot of people are thinking that means that they're going to take the old PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 classics that are available on the PlayStation 3 Marketplace, and they were going to port all of that onto the PlayStation 5, because that's really the only thing I can think of that Sony has already emulated, and now they're specifically making up technology that would allow companies to put trophies into emulated versions of their games. So maybe they are currently working on a way to bring the PlayStation 3 marketplace to the PlayStation 5? However, I would not hold my breath if I was anyone. I would look at this and trust Sony when they tell you we're shutting this down and you can't buy anything anymore. Also, there is another concern that I know a lot of people are having, and this is one that Sony, as far as I know, has not addressed yet. And this is not me coming in here and saying, well, this is what you need to do. No, this is just me going, this is something to think about, and this is something to look out for, you know, check and see if Sony ever says anything about this. But every PlayStation 3 comes with a battery in there. And the battery does need to be changed when it dies out. And it's not a hard thing to change it out. I've watched up tutorial videos online of how to do it. It looks fairly simple. And that's coming from somebody who doesn't know how to do anything with technology. However, when a new battery is put into a PlayStation 3, in order for it to now access your digital games, it first has to make a connection with the PlayStation Store in order to guarantee that you do actually own these games. And as far as I can tell, they have not addressed whether or not they're going to fix that. But if they are still going to keep these games in their servers, I would assume that that means that the thing that your PlayStation still has to check on in order to be able to confirm whether or not you own these games is still going to be there, even if the store itself is not. So it sounds like that's going to be okay, but that is something that we should all, you know, keep our ears to the ground for and see if Sony mentions anything later on. Also, one final thing that is worth mentioning, and this is one area where I actually will give Sony some cred. Yes, I am kind of mad at them for doing all this, but they did do one thing that I thought was pretty decent in here, which they said that if you currently own a PlayStation 3 and you have money in your account, after the store shuts down, you will be able to keep that money around to make purchases on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5, but if you have no intention of buying a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5, and you're just worried about your money being stuck on there, they did say that they will be able to give everyone refunds on whatever amount of money they currently have within their store wallet when the store ends up shutting down. So I feel like that's one thing that someone out there might be concerned about, so I just want to get that out there as well. Okay, that's pretty much all the info that we know right now. Let's go ahead and get into a couple of the games that, as I said, these are not the best games on the PlayStation 3. These are not the best games on the Vita. They're just the ones that if you want to own them, either this is your last opportunity to do that because they don't exist anywhere else, or if you want to own them and you think, should I get the digital or should I get the physical, the digital is much, much cheaper. So this isn't your last opportunity to buy them, it's just your last opportunity to buy them at a reasonable price. Speaking of that, we'll start with a couple of games in that category. I know a lot of people know about the Ratchet and Clank games, a lot of people know about the Sly and Cooper games, but I don't think a lot of people realize that on the PlayStation Store, those games go for about maybe like 10, 15, max $20. And when I was looking around trying to decide what games I should buy, I checked out the Ratchet and Clank games, I checked out the Sly Cooper games, and then I compared them to their physical prices, and they are so much cheaper on the PlayStation Network. Most Ratchet and Clank games that I've seen, they're now going for about $40, about $50. Same thing goes with Sly Cooper. However, as I said, on the PlayStation Network, they're all between $10 and $20. And if you've never played Sly Cooper, I think Sly Cooper is one of the best underappreciated platform series out there. I am not the biggest platform guy, but I love Sly Cooper. And currently, you can buy the Sly Cooper HD Collection, which comes with the first three games in there, for $14.99. That is an amazing price for three incredible games, 
if you decide later on, okay, I'll buy this one. It's physical only. The physical games, from what I can tell, are going for around $50 to $60 from what I saw online. And again, the moment that the digital store is gone and physical becomes the only way you can buy it, those prices are going to go up. And when it comes to Ratchet and Clank, there are a lot of great Ratchet and Clank games that are available on the PlayStation Network, but they are also available physically. However, the games online are going for about $10 for the older games, $20 for the more recent games. As far as I can tell, all those physically are going for about $40. So the price is about half if you want to buy them online. However, here's something that I don't think a lot of people know. PlayStation actually made a digital-only Ratchet & Clank game. It was called Quest for Booty. I haven't played that one yet. I did go ahead and buy it, so I will get to it eventually. However, I checked the reviews online. It's getting pretty decent reviews. Most people tend to put around like the mid-range of the Ratchet & Clank games, and the Ratchet & Clank games are really good, so if it's in the mid-range of that, that means it's a pretty A-OK -okay game. But it was shocking to me that this was a digital-only Ratchet & Clank game. There is no physical release. So if you are a big Ratchet & Clank fan, if you've ever wanted to be a Ratchet & Clank fan, if you just like platformers in general, Quest for Booty. This is the only time you will ever be able to play this Ratchet & Clank game. As soon as that store shuts down, it is gone. But what if you are not a platform fan? What if you're an RPG fan? Well, have you ever played any of the Tales of games? How about you decide that you now want to play all the Tales of games? Yeah, I'll admit I have not played all the Tales of games. I haven't even played half the Tales of games, but I've really enjoyed all the ones that I have played. And the Tales of games kind of ran the PlayStation 3. There were so many Tales of games that were put out on the PlayStation 3, and I looked around, I compared the price of them from digital to physical, and the physical games, again, they're going for about double what the digital games are going for. Most of the digital Tales of games right now are going for $20 from what I saw online. The physical versions are going for about $40. There are a handful of games in the Tales of series that digitally they're going for about $30 or $40 right now. So yeah, those you're pretty much safe waiting to get them physically if you ever decide to. But games like Tales of Zillia, the Tales of Symphonia release, which that was one that I know a lot of people got into the Tales of series with. They might not realize that this classic GameCube game got a re-release on the PlayStation 3 and even include the sequel that they made for Tales of Symphonia. Yeah, both of those games packaged together on the PlayStation 3, only 20 bucks. So again, if you've ever wanted to get into the Tales of series, now is a great opportunity for that. Dragon Guard 3, this is another one that is available physically, so it's not a major priority that I'm putting out there. And also, in all honesty, it's not even considered to be that amazing of a game or a series. The Dragon Guard series, a lot of people really do enjoy it, but a lot of other people just kind of find it to be weird and just repetitive and the combat isn't fully as refined as it should be and the plot is kind of all over the place. I know that even by those standards, Dragon Guard 3 is seen as being kind of on the low end of the Dragon Guard spectrum. I still think it's fun. I still enjoy it, but the main reason I'm bringing it up here is, were you a fan of Nier Automata? Did you really enjoy that game? That game that just swept all the critics and developed this really die-hard fan base? Dragon Guard, in a very, very bizarre way, is the prequel series to the Nier series, and Dragon Guard 3 is a prequel to the first Dragon Guard, which was the game that was the prequel to the Nier series. Yeah, did I mention the plot is weird and all over the place? So the reason I wanted to bring this game up is because if you are a fan of the Nier series, if you love Nier Automata, and you thought to yourself, hey, I would love to get into everything within this series, and I want to see where this series began, and I want to see the series that was the prequel to this series, well, Dragon Guard was, again, in a very odd way, the prequel to the Nier series. And if you want to check out these games, Dragon Guard 3, it is digitally available for 15 bucks, but if you decide not to get it digitally, you can still get it physically, but it's going for like 50, 60 dollars. So, again, this is one of those games that, not mandatory, you will be able to get it physically, just it's gonna cost you a lot more if you don't decide to get it now. Another game that if you want to own it, yes, it does exist physically, but it is going to be cheaper for you if you decide that you want to buy it digitally. However, unlike those previous couple of games, there is part of this game that only exists digitally. So even if you own a physical copy of it, 
maybe you want to check out part of this thing that is only available on the PlayStation Store. I'm talking about Infamous. Yes, Infamous was a huge franchise for the PlayStation 3. It's one of those games that kind of defined the PlayStation 3. And it's really shocking to me that Sony has not tried to port this thing to the PlayStation 4. It is stunning to me that this was a franchise that for the longest time they kept pointing at like, yeah, that's our guy. Cole. Cole McGrath? That is our dude. And then, like, as soon as they moved on to the next gen, they were like, I'm sorry, do I know you? Oh, no, you're looking for the PlayStation 3. It's way back there. You're not allowed on this console. Uh, but, yeah, these games are actually fun. I actually really enjoy the Infamous series. And if you want to get it physically, the physical versions are actually still pretty cheap. I saw that the individual versions of each of these games, of Infamous 1 and Infamous 2, were going for about 10 bucks digitally but they were also going for about 10 bucks physically. So physical, digital, you're pretty evenly split there. However, here's something that I think that a lot of people forget about the Infamous series. They also had a digital only game called Infamous 2 Festival of Blood. It was a mini game that was added to the second game where you get turned into a vampire and now you only have a couple of hours in order to reverse it all and stop this big vampire villain character. Yeah, it is a fun, like, Halloween spooky edition onto this game. It is only available digitally. And as I said, Infamous 1 going for about 10 bucks online, Infamous 2 going for about 10 bucks online, Festival of Blood goes for about 5 bucks online. However, if you don't own any of these and you're interested in checking out all of them, you can get the Infamous Collection that includes all three of these games for $14.99. That's gonna save you a good chunk of change. Okay, how about a couple of digital-only games? These are the games that if you want to play them, this is the only chance you're going to get. These games are not available anywhere else. They are only on the PlayStation Network, and as soon as they shut down, that's it. First game I'm going to talk about is Tokyo Jungle. Have you ever won a game that is the answer to what is the weirdest thing that you have ever played? Tokyo Jungle. This game only got a physical release in Japan, and yes, the PlayStation 3 is region free, so if you want to import a copy of the Japanese Tokyo Jungle, well, good luck with that, but even that's going for pretty pricey right now. So if you ever want to check this out, get it digitally right now. This is a game that is about after some kind of a tragedy happens that wipes out all of mankind, the animals are left to just roam around the city and you can play as different animals, and you have to explore this overgrown Tokyo with other animals roaming around there. And I'll admit, I have watched some people play this thing, and it just looks bizarre to me. However, all the people who have played this game have told me, no, 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 you don't understand. There's actually like really big stuff in here, and it's actually like really deep, and you really need to play this. I have not met one person who has played this game who has not hyped the crap out of it. So I'm definitely going to be checking this one out. If you want to as well, this is your last opportunity to play it. Next game up is Rain. This is a small indie game and it looks gorgeous. You're playing as like this invisible character that's just walking around the rain and there's some kind of creature that's chasing you in the rain. It's a real shame to see these smaller indie games disappear. It feels like this thing would be perfect to be poured over to Steam. But at the moment, there's no plan for that, so it's going to be disappearing as soon as this store shuts down. And the thing that I can say about Rain is, look at the footage of it, look at other people playing online, and if it looks like something you'd be interested in, then go ahead and check it out. Like, this is one of those games that as soon as you see it, you know what it's about. Here is one that I just found out about. Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars. Wow, I can't believe that I got that out on the first try. Are you guys familiar with Rocket League? Yeah, you probably are. It's a fairly large game here on the internet. A lot of people love that game. They are obsessed with that game. I thought that was the first game in the series. I did not know that Rocket League was a sequel to a game, and this is the game it was the sequel to. It's made by the exact same guys, plays pretty much exactly the same, doesn't look as great as Rocket League, but I mean, it was definitely the first version of Rocket League, so it wasn't going to look as good. But if you are a fan of Rocket League, check this game out. If you want to know about the legacy of that series, there you go. Again, I had no idea this thing even existed until I was researching this video. And the last digital-only game that only exists on the PS3, I've got a couple other digital-only games coming up soon, but they do exist on other formats. But in terms of games that only exist on the PlayStation Store for the PS3, Legazista. 
Which, uh, yeah, remember how I said that these weren't a list of the best games and that some of these games were actually not that good? This game has gotten some pretty mediocre to not great reviews. So I was kind of wondering if I should even mention this thing. But I decided I should bring it up and bring it to everyone's attention because this game is made by NIS. You know, the same people who make Disgaea, they make that Witch in the Hundred Knight. There are a ton of games that this studio puts out, and I know that this studio has its fans that just love anything that this studio does. This studio puts something out, they just love the sense of humor, they love the character design, so even if the game isn't all that great, they want to check it out. So even though this game has not gotten great reviews, I decided, you know what, someone out there is going to be one of those NIS fans. They're going to be one of those people who they just love everything this studio does. They should probably know there is a game from them that is digital only, and as soon as this store shuts down, they're no longer going to have access to it. So if you want to check it out, this is your chance. All right, those are all the games I thought were worth mentioning that are available only on the PlayStation 3 store. However, these next couple of games, they are available only digitally on the PlayStation 3 store, but they are also available digitally on the Xbox Marketplace, and they're all also backwards compatible on the Xbox Series S, so you don't even need to dust off your old Xbox 360 console. You can still play that thing on your brand new Xbox console. However, as I said earlier on, I know that a lot of people out there who play the PlayStation, they also have a Steam account. A lot of the people who play the PlayStation, they also have a Nintendo Switch. But when it comes to PlayStation and it comes to Xbox, there is that big divide. And a lot of the people who own one, they do not own the other. So if you do not own an Xbox and you have no plans to get an Xbox, you might as well treat these games like they are digital only and they're about to disappear forever for you. First up is Far Cry Blood Dragon. This game took everything that had been built up in Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 2, and they said, well, what if instead of trying to make some big serious story about survival, what if instead we just went totally 80s and weird, crazy future sci-fi movie aspect? Like everything is neon, everything just feels bombastic and blown up to 11. And yeah, this game, it feels like a parody of those like 1980s future movies. Like, not the good ones, either. I mean, like, the cheesy B-movies. And if you're a fan of those cheesy B-movies, this game is made to celebrate all that stuff. And it is a ton of fun, even if you're not really into the Far Cry series. Just the tone, just the aesthetic. It really is gonna hit those buttons for you if this is your jam. If this is the kind of stuff that you're into, then this game is made for you. Next up, Hardcore Uprising. I've seen a lot of people split on this game because this is a Contra game. And I've seen a lot of Contra fans say, yeah, it's not really a great Contra game, but I've seen a lot of people who aren't Contra fans say, this game is great. So I'm wondering if it's one of those divides where it's just the fans of the series just don't think it's a good addition, but still a good game. However, it's made by Arc System Works, so you know it's going to look amazing. So if you ever want to see an Arc Systems run and gun game, Hardcore Uprising, check it out. Next up, this one is stunning to me that it does not have a physical release. It does have a physical release over in Japan, but did not get a physical release in America. In America, if you want to play this thing, it is only available digitally. Fist of the North Star, Ken's Rage 2. All I really have to say about this one is that it's a Fist of the North Star game. Because I know Fist of the North Star fans, and if you're a fan of that series, you are a fan of that series, and you want to check out all the stuff that that series produces, and I think a lot of Fish of the North Star fans might not know that this game even exists because, as I said, it did not get a physical release. And I'll admit, I am not in the Fish of the North Star fan base, so I have not checked this out for myself, but I did look at reviews online. It's actually getting pretty decent reviews, so it looks like even if you are not a Fish of the North Star fan, this is a pretty good game in and of itself. But okay, now it's done moving some stuff that I actually am a fan of, horror games. And I know not everyone is into horror games, so a lot of people are about to skip ahead. Hold up! Before you skip ahead, let me just throw one game out there. You might not be a horror fan, but are you a fan of Yakuza? Yeah, I know that the Yakuza fanbase has exploded. A ton of people love the Yakuza franchise. Its fanbase grows larger and larger with every single installment. Did you guys know they made a zombie game? And I don't mean the Yakuza team split off and made a zombie game. No, no, no. There is a Yakuza zombie game. It's called Yakuza Dead Souls. It is only on the PlayStation 3, and it did get a physical release. However, digitally, it's going for 20 bucks. The physical game at this point is going for over 100. 
and it is shocking to me that I haven't heard more people talk about this game, but it almost feels like Sega is trying to bury this game because every single Yakuza game has gotten an HD re-release. This is the one that hasn't. This is the only one that they have decided, nah, we're good on that. We're just gonna leave that one aside. So yeah, this thing might not ever come back in any way, shape, or form. It could, and if it does, then it's great. But the moment, if you are a Yakuza fan and you did not know that they made a zombie game, then you may want to take a look at this before it ends up costing you a hundred bucks for the physical version. Next up, House of the Dead 4. This is another one of those series that I know has its fan base. The people out there who love House of the Dead, they are huge fans of it. I know House of the Dead 4 actually got some pretty decent reviews. I know that the House of the Dead franchise, it's had its highs, it's had its lows. From what I understand, House of the Dead 4, it's more towards the high end. A lot of people seem to enjoy it. However, the reason why I'm bringing it up here is because this game is only available digitally on the PlayStation 3 store. Didn't get any kind of a physical release. If you go on Google, type in House of the Dead 4, then click on that shopping tab, the first thing that's going to pop up is a $2,000 arcade console. Yeah, if you are a fan of House of the Dead, or even if you're just a fan of light gun shooters in general, I'm not going to say that you have to play this game, but you should be aware that it does not exist anywhere else and is going away forever as soon as the store shuts down. Next up, another installment in a franchise that has its fans, and this game only exists digitally on the PlayStation Store. Siren Blood Curse. The Siren franchise it never got as many fans as Resident Evil or as Silent Hill or Fatal Frame, but is another one of those big Japanese horror franchises that the people who love it, they absolutely love it. And I've checked out some of the Siren games. Yeah, they are pretty darn good. They are pretty damn creepy. And they are very Japanese. Like, if you are familiar with Japanese horror, this is one of the better games when it comes to celebrating that unique type of creepiness. And Siren Blood Curse, uh, okay, let me go ahead and say this. It came out during that time when every single studio out there was like, oh, we're gonna release a brand new game, but we're going to release it episodically. We're going to just put out one episode after another, so you only get a little bit of the game at a time. And yeah, now you can just buy the entire thing. It's not that expensive at all. You can go ahead and buy all the chapters at once, but it does kind of make it a pain to go ahead and play through the entire thing. However, Siren Blood Curse actually kind of leans into this format because you play as multiple different characters and their stories are interconnecting. So it actually kind of works here. And this is actually one of the best reviewed Siren games. And it only got a physical release over in Japan. So if you want to check this out, this is your only opportunity to do that. The next two games are games that only exist digitally on the PlayStation Store. However, both of them actually came out on the Wii. So if you still have a Wii and you decide, yeah, I'd rather just play it on there, then you're safe. But if you don't still have your Wii, if you don't feel like taking it out of storage, or you want to play these things in way better graphics, then here you go. The first game that I'm talking about is Dead Space Extraction. This was a mini story that they created. It was kind of like a spinoff game that focused on someone who was trying to escape from the place that you find yourself in in Dead Space 2. You know, you wake up and you're on that colony where everyone lives, but the necromorphs are coming to life. This focuses on someone as they try to escape as the necromorphs are coming to life. And it is another light gun shooter, which is one of the reasons why I existed on the Wii. And again, I know some people, they would far rather play their light gun shooters on the Wii because then you've got the motion controls in there. And I absolutely understand that. But as I said, if you don't feel like hunting down a physical version of this, if you don't feel like dusting off your old Wii, this game, it did get ported to the PlayStation 3. That's the only place that it exists. Every single other Dead Space game exists on every single other console out there. For some reason, this one never got ported past the PlayStation 3. So if you are a Dead Space completionist and you want to play all the Dead Space games, check this one out. And the last horror game that I'm going to recommend to you guys today, Resident Evil Chronicles The HD Collection. Again, this came out on the Wii. It was actually two games and they were light gun shooters that followed the adventures of your characters within some of the pre previous Resident Evil games, like you followed through as Leon and Claire in Resident Evil 2, you played as Chris and Jill in the first Resident Evil game. You basically just got to see a brand new take on these classic games because they were now interpreted into the light gun format. 
However, there are some additional stories in here that if you are a massive Resident Evil fan, they are actually pretty important canonical stories to the Resident Evil universe. For example, in the Resident Evil remake that came out on the GameCube, they introduced the character of Lisa Trevor, and Lisa Trevor is basically indestructible, and the way that you defeat her is that you just trick her into jumping off of something. But some of you might have thought, well, yeah, but that wouldn't actually kill her. I mean, she'd still be there, so what happened to her? You get to see a story from Wesker's point of view as he's trying to escape the mansion, and you see him run to Lisa Trevor. So yeah, if you ever wanted to see what happened to both those characters at the end of Resident Evil, there you go. Or, and this is the one that's really important in my opinion, remember in Resident Evil 4, when Krauser pops up, and Leon's like, Krauser, my old nemesis. And you're just like, who? I'm sorry, I've never seen you before. Yeah, their backstory is actually in the Resident Evil light gun games. It's actually in this game in which you go on a secret mission that the two of them went on when they were working together so you actually get to see brand new content involving both characters. It's kind of crazy to me that really big important story beats for the Resident Evil universe is locked in a light gun game that only exists on the Wii and after August will no longer exist on the PlayStation 3. But okay, that is enough of the spooky scary games. Let's move away from the horror games and let's move into fighting games. And I think the perfect game to bridge the gap between these two genres, Darkstalkers Resurrection. Yes, Darkstalkers has been ported to pretty much every single different console generation that you can think of, and it did recently get ported to the Capcom Arcade collection that is now coming out on the Switch, and I think that's supposed to be coming out on all the other consoles soon. So if you do want to play the Darkstalker games, they are going to be available on a more modern console. However, Darkstalkers Resurrection is the best way to play the Darkstalkers games. It has online play, which I believe is still up and running. The graphics look nice and crisp, at least as crisp as 30-year-old graphics can look. There's really great training modes in here. There's all kinds of awards and achievements that you can get in this game. A lot of concept art, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff in here. Yeah, if you are a Darkstalkers fan, this is absolutely the best way to play Darkstalkers. Never got released physically here in the States. They decided to only keep this locked on the PS3 generation. It has not been bumped up to any more recent generation, which is really bizarre to me because, as I said, Capcom decides to keep releasing the Darkstalkers series. Just, you know, not the really good version of Darkstalkers. So if you have ever wanted to play Darkstalkers, this is the best version of Darkstalkers. And again, it is only available digitally, so as soon as the PS3 store shuts down, it will never be seen again. Speaking of Capcom games that you can still buy in other re-releases, but this is the best version of it, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike Online Edition. Yes, you can play Street Fighter 3 Third Strike on the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Man, that is a lot worse to string together. However, most people tend to agree this is the best version of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, which, most people agree, is the best Street Fighter game. It was made by the exact same team that made Darkstalkers Resurrection, so just take all the stuff that I just said about Darkstalkers Resurrection and just apply it to this version of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. The sprites look clean and crisp, there's great training modes in here, there's lots of achievements that you can get, the music has been updated, and man, the soundtrack in this game is fantastic. But also, this is the only version of Street Fighter 3 Third Strike where you can unlock the ability to play as Gil, the final boss. Next up, Soul Calibur 2 HD Online Edition. Soul Calibur 2 is considered by many people to be arguably the best Soul Calibur game. But one of the things that made Soul Calibur 2 so interesting was that it got released on the GameCube, the PlayStation 2, and on the Xbox, and every single one of those games had a different console-exclusive character. The GameCube version had Link. You will not be seeing Link in here. However, the PS2 version had Hey Hati from Tekken, and the Xbox version had Spawn from Spawn. And the Soul Calibur 2 HD Online Edition not only is it a graphical improvement on the previous version of this game, but also it includes both Heihachi and Spawn. You do get to play as both of those characters, and I feel like I should go ahead and mention this right now. This game, while it is only available digitally, it is also available on the Xbox, but as I said earlier, there is that big divide between PlayStation fans and Xbox fans. 
So I know a lot of PlayStation fans do not own Xbox. They have no interest in buying an Xbox. So if you are one of those PlayStation fans and you are interested in this game, as soon as that store shuts down, that's it. You're not going to be able to buy this game again. So pick it up now while you can. And for the final game that I'm going to mention that is available on the PlayStation 3, man, you want to talk about franchises that have diehard fan bases. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle. This is a 3D fighter based around JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and I will be honest with you guys, I picked this thing up, and I was not expecting much. I thought that was just going to be some cheap cash grab, some anime arena fighter where everybody played exactly the same. No, this game is actually legitimately good. This is actually a really solid 3D fighter. There's actually mechanics in here that are really interesting, and the way that you can use your stands actually makes the gameplay really fun. And the graphics look great. It looks like something came right out of the anime, and there's tons of flair and tons of special effects that are thrown in here. And yeah, it's just a loving tribute to the JoJo series, but even if you're not a JoJo's fan, it is a solid 3D fighter. And I believe the game is going for around $30 online right now. However, it is available physically, but the physical version of this is going for a lot. I can't even remember what was the last time that I looked at, but it was around the triple digits. It is a pricey, pricey game. And the reason why is because when it came over here into the States, it did not have a huge release, simply because when this came over during the PS3 days, JoJo was not what it is today. These days, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure has a huge fan base. Back then, that fan base in America was just starting to spring up. But here's the other reason why physical versions go for so much. It's because this game actually got pulled, like, from everywhere. I know that physical releases of this were cut short, and the digital version of this has been taken off of the PlayStation Store in every country except for America and Japan. Like, I know that you can't download this in Europe anymore. I know that, like, in pretty much every single other country outside of America and Japan, you cannot download this game anymore. So, yeah, this thing is one of those games that as soon as it goes off the PlayStation 3 store, it's already expensive. I can guarantee you it's going to become even more expensive after that. Also, I feel like this would be a really good time to remind anyone listening to this outside of America that the PlayStation 3 was region-free. This wasn't like the previous generations of consoles, where if you bought a console in your home country, it could only play games from your home country. No, no, no. The PlayStation 3, no matter what country you buy it in, can play games from every other country out there. So, if you are in Europe, if you are in another country outside of America or Japan, and you're a big JoJo fan, and you really want to play this, just set up an American PlayStation 3 account. It is not that hard to do at all. Then you go online, you buy the code for a PlayStation 3 gift card, you punch that code into your American PlayStation 3 account, and then you take the dollars that you just created from that, and then you use those dollars in order to buy this game. I have done this with numerous games before, it is not that hard to do. So, as I said, those are all the PlayStation 3 games that I wanted to take a moment to stop and spotlight. However, before we move into our next category, there is something that I think a lot of people aren't realizing about these digital games, which is that as soon as August rolls around, you won't just be unable to buy digital games anymore, you will also be unable to buy DLC. This is really one of the first times that we've ever seen something like this happen, where now, if you buy even the physical release of some of these games, you will not be able to have all the content that comes on that game unless you planned ahead and already got the DLC for it. So I just want to take a real quick moment in here to just remind everybody, think about the DLC. And the reason why I'm bringing that up right now is because I just mentioned JoJo's All-Star Battle. If you get that game, you do need to go online and download a patch for it, which will allow you to complete the story mode. In order to play all the single player content on that game, you do first need to go online and get the DLC patch for it. And the reason why they had DLC patch for it is because there are eight DLC characters for this game. And that additional story stuff in there revolves around those DLC characters. So if you decide to get the JoJo's game, make sure that you get that DLC patch. 
Make sure that you don't just get the game and let it sit there on your PS3, and then after the PS3 store decides to shut down, that's when you think to yourself, okay, now I want to go online and play. Now I actually want to check this out. You're not going to be able to get everything on there. That store is shut down. You're not going to be able to get all the stuff that you need for it. But also, I do want to bring up the DLC characters because, as I said, there are eight DLC characters for this game. So again, if you are a massive JoJo fan and you think to yourself, I really want to play this game, remember, if you want to play all the DLC characters, you also have to get that stuff before the August shutdown date. Same thing actually goes for a lot of fighting games. This is a very weird thing to me, that this is the first generation of fighting games that we're going to have where if you don't already have this pre-ordered and ready before a certain shutdown date, you will just never be able to have a complete roster. That is just insane to me to think that that is going to be a thing, that someone 10 years down the line might look back at one of these games and think to themselves, oh, that's cool, I want to check this game out. And if they then go and decide to check that game out, they will never be able to have the complete experience of that game. Uh, for example, I want to come in here and spotlight this real quick. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, I love this game. I'm a massive fan of the Persona series, but even speaking just as a fighting game fan, this is a really good fighting game. It's one of my favorites from this generation, and I played this game a lot, but did not occur to me until this news of the shutdown date came. As much as I played this game, I never bought any of the DLC characters. So I had to make sure that I went in there and I bought those three DLC characters that they had before it was too late. Otherwise, I just would never have been able to play them. Another fighting game that is worth pointing out, I know that it is a punchline, I know a lot of people just love to point and make fun of this game, but PlayStation All-Star Battle Royale, I know that game has its fans, I have met several of the fans out there, it is, despite all of its problems, still a fairly fun little party game. If you and your friends ever want to get together and just play this game again, well, there are physical versions of the game, however, there are those four DLC characters, including, shockingly enough, Isaac Clark from Dead Space, which I just need to remind myself that was a thing that they decided to put in here. But yes, there are four DLC characters, so if you are a fan of this game, make sure you check out those DLC characters before it's too late. Another thing that's worth pointing out, Asura's Wrath. Now again, Asura's Wrath, it is available on the Xbox. In fact, it's even available on the PlayStation now, so if you decide to sign up for that streaming service they have, then you can still play this game. However, if you want to play Asura's Wrath on the PS3, well, first off, it's not even available to buy digitally on the PS3 anymore. You have to have a physical version of it. So I know I'm speaking to a very niche audience right now, but if you are someone out there who bought a physical version of Asura's Wrath and you've never played it and it's just been sitting on your shelf and you keep thinking to yourself, yeah, one day I'm going to get around to playing that. One day I'm going to check it out. I feel like I need to remind you, the true ending to that game is locked behind DLC. You do need to buy the true ending to that game. So out of all the DLC I want to spotlight real quick, I feel like that is one of the most important ones to spotlight because if you don't buy it, it's not like you're missing out on content. No, you're missing out on the ending. You're just screwed if you haven't bought that yet. So yeah, I'm not going to go through every single game out there that has DLC, but again, that is something that you definitely need to think about before this store shuts down. Here's something else that I don't think a lot of people have thought about, and I know this one isn't nearly as important, but it's one that I definitely wanted to make sure and spotlight. Avatars. If you enjoy customizing your PlayStation profile, if you enjoy getting special avatars for your PlayStation profile, there are a lot of avatars they're tied specifically to the PlayStation 3 store, and as soon as it shuts down, you're not going to have them anymore. And I decided to check some of these out. I decided to just do a little deep dive into the PlayStation store, see what was available. There's some really cool avatars on there for really darn cheap. Darkstalkers, if you want to get a Darkstalker avatar, bam, there they are. They're all in the PlayStation 3. Strider, if you're a big fan of the Strider series, there's some really cool Strider uh, avatars. They're available on there. Beautiful Joe, including Dante from the Devil May Cry series. They're all in there. Mega Man Power Up. Not Mega Man, but you remember that little chibi version of Mega Man that was available on the PSP? Yeah, I really love the art style of the different robot masters in there and of Mega Man. 
they made little avatars for them and they looked adorable and they're only available on the PlayStation 3. And here's the big one. This is the one that shocked me. Rival Schools. You know me, you know I'm a huge fan of Rival Schools. We did a whole video series deep dive on and I've heard from you guys. I know a lot of you guys out there are Rival Schools fans. Despite the fact that this game has not been ported to any recent console out there, aside from in Japan where it did get re-released on the PlayStation 3, which is probably why these avatars are here, there are avatars on the PlayStation 3. So if you are, like me, a big Rival Schools fan, you can get avatars for Rival Schools to represent yourself on your PlayStation profile up until this store shuts down. Then they're gone forever. So again, just think about if there's any game out there that you really love, and you would love to take a character from that series and slap them up there on your PlayStation profile, check and see if they have an avatar that you might want to get before they're gone. But okay, as I said, I have now covered all the PlayStation 3 games that I wanted to talk about. However, just because I've covered all the PlayStation 3 games doesn't mean there aren't still games on the PlayStation 3 that are worth talking about. This is something that it shocks me how many people don't know this, but PlayStation released on the PS3 just a massive ton of old PS1 games and PS2 games, many of which are super crazy rare, and they are next to impossible to find on any physical version, and they have not been re-released on any format. So if you want to play these classic games, this is it. This is your last chance to do that. Seriously, there are so many amazing games that are just about to up and disappear and I don't feel like nearly enough people know about this, so... I'm not going to cover all the PS1 classics, I'm not going to cover all the PS2 classics, but I am going to link in the description down below the Wikipedia page that lists off all the PlayStation 1 and PS2 classics. You definitely need to look through there, but I am going to run down real quick a couple of these games that I feel are worth mentioning. Resident Evil, you can get the original Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. You can get all those as they were presented on the PlayStation 1. Now, I know some people out there are going to say, well, we have the remakes. Do we really need the classics? Yes, the classics were very different from the remakes, especially Resident Evil 3. That is the number one thing that I heard from Resident Evil fans when the Resident Evil 3 remake came out was, where was this part of the game? Why did they take that part of the game out of there? So yeah, if you want to play the original version of this game, you can only get on the PS1 Classic. Silent Hill! Listen, Konami is probably never going to release any of the Silent Hill stuff again. Partly because they completely lost the codes for Silent Hill 2 and 3, so they're not just going to re-release Silent Hill 1. So if you want to play Silent Hill 1, it's on the PS1 Classics. This is your last chance to get. Klonoa! A super fun platformer series. Even if you're not into platformers, buy this Klonoa. Just do it, because on the PlayStation Store, it's $5.99. Do you want to get a physical version of it? $300. Like, and that's if it's on sale somewhere. It's probably going for even more than that. Yeah, this is one of the most expensive PlayStation 1 games out there. You can still play it right now as a PS1 classic on the PS3. Speaking of crazy expensive but cute and charming games, the Mega Man Legends games, Mega Man Legends 1 and Mega Man Legends 2, these games go for a ton of money online. So you can get them here for $5.99, and you can also get The Misadventures of Tron Bon. Yes, Tron Bon was such a huge hit in the Mega Man Legends series, they gave her her own game. It's going for like $5.99 as a PS1 classic. If you want the physical version, it's like $400. Bucks. It's one of the most expensive Capcom games that has ever been made. Do yourself a favor, and even if you don't think you have any interest in this game, just go ahead and get it for $5.99 while you can, in case one day in the future you decide that you might want. A couple of other fun platformer games, Rayman 1, Rayman 2, those games became legends for a reason, because they were super fun, they had a great character in there, and also, like, listen, Rayman's one of those characters that, if you just want to know more about video games, He's kind of one of the big icons that tends to be forgotten about today. So yeah, go ahead, check out some of his early stuff. Tomba, this is one of those PlayStation exclusive platformers that people swear by. I've never played it myself, but everybody I know who has touched Tomba has said, oh, this is one of those hidden gems. This is one of those platformers that the real platformer fans know about. So if you want to check that game out, it is available on the PlayStation 1 Classics. How about if RPGs is your thing? 
Vagrant Story. I remember when this game came out, it blew people's minds because its graphics were so cutting edge for the day. I might just be talking about with big old nostalgia classics on, but I remember it being a great game. And again, it's one of those games that goes for like a hundred bucks these days. So if you want to play it, play it digitally as a PS1 classic. Uh, Legend of Dragoon, another crazy expensive game today. Another one of those games that the big RPG fans love back when it came out. There are still people to this day who want to see a re-release or a remaster of it. So yeah, check it out, see what everyone's been talking about. The Persona games, you guys know me. You know I am a massive Persona fan. Uh, Persona 2 uh, is available on the PS1 Classics. Uh, this is where it gets confusing. There are two different Persona games, and I can't remember off the top of my head which one is available on the PS1 Classics, but one of them is available on the PS1 Classics, one of them is available for the PSP, which I will be getting to in a moment. So if you own both the PlayStation 3 and a Vita, you can play both the different versions of Persona 2. Chrono Cross, this game was sort of the spiritual successor to Chrono Trigger. It's semi a sequel, but it doesn't involve any of the characters from the first game, but still kind of set in the same world. It's one of those games where Chrono Trigger was all about time travel. This one's about like dimensional travel. And I will be honest with you guys, maybe it's just because I played this game before playing Chrono Trigger, but I think this game gets such a bad rap. I don't say it gets a bad rap in that people hate it. No, 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 everybody agrees it's good, but most people who talk about Chrono Cross can't help but go, yeah, but it's no Chrono Trigger. They always have to throw in there the, yeah, but you know, compared to the original, that one was definitely bare. Again, I played this one before the original. I love Chrono Cross. Love it, love it, love it. Not only does it have a really imaginative world and story behind it, but also there's like 30 different characters who can join your party and they all have really unique designs and backstories and powers and I love them all. This is absolutely an RPG hidden gem. And listen, Chrono Trigger is going to continue to be re-released on pretty much every format because it's a classic. As I said, no one really talks about Chrono Cross. I can almost guarantee this will never get a re-release. So go, play it now while you can. Dino Crisis 1 and 2, I probably should have mentioned this back to back with the Resident Evil games, but yeah, if you want to know about the dinosaur cousins to Resident Evil, here it is. This is one of those franchises that people absolutely love, and yet Capcom has decided to just bury and never mention again, so will it get an HD re-release one day? Probably should. Will it actually happen? Probably not. So yeah, go ahead and play it now as a PS1 classic. Speaking of beloved Capcom franchises, Strider 2. This is the game that took the stuff that was set up in the first Strider game, as far as like game mechanics go, and really refine it. This is when we saw the Strider that everybody loves. This is the Strider that everybody knows. This is the Strider that made it into Marvel. So if you want to know about the history of this character, if you want to know that game that everybody loves from this character, Strider 2. Okay, we are almost done with the PS1 classics, but before we go, I have to bring this one up. Bloody Roar 1 and 2. I love Bloody Roar. This was one of those series that just had me hooked as a kid. Not only is the beast transformation a fun mechanic, but also, there's actually some tech behind this game. Like, I remember playing this as a kid and I thought it was just a brainless slobber knocker. But as I got older, I started to realize, oh no, there's actually like some smart mechanics in this thing. But you don't really need to play the smart mechanics because all the big flashy stuff like the beast transformations and just exploding someone out of the ring just looks so darn cool that you can enjoy it just from that standpoint. And Boy War 1 and 2, yeah, surprise, surprise, it's another one of those games that goes for crazy expensive online, so buy it for $5.99 while you can. And the final game that I am going to bring up as a PS1 classic, again, there's so many good ones to talk about, just check that list down below, but one, make sure that I spotlight this one real quick, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I know a lot of people right now are questioning why I'm bothering to mention this, because they did re-release this game on the PlayStation 4, so you know it's got the updated graphics, it's got trophies that you can acquire in there, it's on a console that is going to continue to get support for the time being. Why on earth would I recommend buying the PS1 Classics version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Well, because the version of Castlevania Symphony of the Night that came to that Castlevania Symphony of the Night re-release was the PSP remake of the game, which does have updated graphics, 
but also has completely re-recorded dialogue and rewritten lines. So if you want to hear this classic moment... What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! But enough talk! How about you? You can only get that on this PS1 re-release now. It's a very niche thing, but this is a video entirely about games that you should be buying on the PS3 right now. This entire video is kind of for niche audiences. But those were just the PS1 classics, there's also the PS2 classics, and there's so many amazing PS2 games, they're so hard to find these days. Again, I'm just going to link you in the description down below the complete list, make sure that you go and you check that out. I'm just going to cover a couple in here that are absolutely worth mentioning. God Hand. This is one of those cult classic Capcom games. People love God Hand. I will admit, there's some weird things in here that didn't quite age well. I will fully admit that there are a couple of moments in here that you're going to look at and go, ooh, that's, um, that doesn't really translate uh, over here to America in the 2020s all that well. I'll go ahead and admit that right now, but there are some other moments in here that are genuinely really likable. Some really funny moments in here. There's some really enjoyable characters in here. Also, the combat is great. Yeah, this is totally worth checking out. And God Hand, physical copies of it, super expensive. So check this game out now if you have any interest in it. Capcom vs. SNK2. One of, if not arguably, the best fighting game ever made. We are working on a video right now that involves Capcom vs. SNK2. So I've been going back and replaying this on the PS2 classics, and every time that I pick this up, I just remind myself of how incredibly good this game feels. If you want to play one of the best fighting games ever, check out Capcom vs. SNK2. Contra, Shattered Soldier. I will admit I am not really into the Contra franchise. I haven't really touched it all that much ever since I was a kid, so I haven't played this one myself. However, I did look around online, this is apparently like the best reviewed Contra game out there. The graphics look really darn good. I watched a couple of reviews on this game in preparation for this video and I saw people saying the only really bad thing about this game is that it's basically just a bunch of big boss fights, but all the big boss fights looked really cool. So I don't know, I feel like I'd be okay with that. But yeah, if you ever want to get into Contra, as I said, this is like one of the best reviewed ones out there. Shinobi! Oh my gosh, when I was a kid I thought Shinobi was the coolest thing in the world. This was like Ninja Gaiden, except with a really big, long, flowing scarf. It is another action-packed ninja game. You've seen many of them out there like that. However, most of them are really darn fun, and this is another really darn fun one. A couple of horror games to bring up real quick. I mentioned the Siren franchise earlier on. Well, Siren started on the PS2. The original Siren is available on the PS2 Classics. If you want to know what I was talking about with this franchise and why so many people enjoy it, check it out now. Also, Fatal Frame 1, 2, and 3 are all available on here. That's right, one of the most critically praised Japanese survival horror franchises of all time you can get the first three games all on the PS2 classics. Let's move on to some RPGs. Suicoden 3 and 4. I forgot to mention this, but Suicoden 1 and 2 are available as PS1 classics. However, I know that Suicoden 3 and 4 are the ones that everybody talks about and everybody praises. This is one of those games that when I was coming up and I was really getting into RPGs, everybody kept telling me, you need to check out Suicoden 3. This is the one that's going to blow your mind. It's got a huge cast of characters, big epic stories in there. Never checked out 4, but from what I understand, it continued all the really good stuff from 3. I checked out reviews before doing this video. They're all still really high for both 3 and 4. So yeah, if you're a big fan of RPGs and you never checked out Sui Kohn, Sui Kohn 3 and 4 on the PS2 Classics. Next up, as I mentioned, I'm a big Persona fan. Well, Persona is part of the Shin Megami Tensei series. There are so many Shin Megami Tensei games that are part of the PS2 classics. There's the Devil Summoner series, which follows a teenage detective in the 1920s. Yeah, it's a really unique saying. And also it's different from a lot of the other Shin Megami Tensei series because it takes place more in an arena format, kind of like the Tales of series. Uh, then there's also Digital Devil Saga, which is one of the weirdest things that Shin Megami Tensei has ever done. 
And that's really saying something. Both of these franchises have been critically applauded. People love these games. They are cult classics for a reason. If you have never checked them out, but you're a fan of, say, like Persona or some of the other later Shin Megami Tensei games, then go back, find out where this series really began with some of these earlier Shin Megami Tensei games. Speaking of Persona, Persona 3 FES is available on the PlayStation 2 Classics. As I've mentioned several times before, I love Persona. It is quite possibly my favorite video game series of all time. That love began with Persona 3. And I will admit, the game hasn't aged all that well in terms of gameplay because there were definitely a couple of problems with the gameplay even when I was checking it out when it originally came out. But as time went on in Persona 4 and definitely in Persona 5, they took the mechanics of Persona 3 and really worked them over. They really cleaned it up, made that system run incredibly smooth. So if you're going from Persona 5 back to Persona 3, just be warned, some of the gameplay in here is going to feel really clunky compared to what you're used to. However, all the stuff like social links and the whole gameplay mechanic of you get to know people and that makes you stronger in battle, that stuff is still here. Really great cast of characters to this day. Some of my favorite characters from the Persona series come from Persona 3. Akihiko is a boss and Mitsuru is fantastic. So yeah, if you have never checked out Persona 3, if you're a fan of Persona 4, if you're a fan of Persona 5, and you want to know where a lot of the good stuff in these games started, they started in Persona 3. I will say real quick, Persona 4 is also available as a PS2 classic and Persona 4 is amazing. But the updated version of Persona 4, Persona 4 Golden, is now available on Steam. After all this time, Atlas finally realized, hey, maybe if we make our game available to more people, more people will play it. I know, crazy concept. But after all this time, they decided to release it on Steam. It's doing incredibly well on Steam. So if you want to play Persona 4, yes, it is available as a PS2 classic, but I would just recommend picking it up on Steam. But okay, again, can't cover every single PS2 classic, but there's so many good ones in there. So again, check the description down below for the full list of all the games that you can play. Let's go into the final part of our video today. I'm going to talk about the Vita games. Also going to talk about some PSP games in here because I don't know how many people know this. Every single digital PSP game is available on the Vita. So yeah, the Vita was completely backwards compatible with the PSP. And there's honestly just way, way too many good PSP games to mention on here. But just a couple of them real quick that I feel are worth pointing out. I just talked about Persona 3 FES as a PS2 classic. Well, if you have a Vita, you should also go ahead and pick up Persona 3 Portable. Why should you pick up Persona 3 Portal? Because not only did that game fix a couple of the problems with the social links that you had in the original Persona 3, but also they add in there a second protagonist. You can now choose to play as a male or female protagonist, and the female protagonist has a completely different story. She has totally unique interactions with all the other characters in there, and also she's way more charming than the male protagonist. I know I'm probably alone on that, but yeah, wasn't really the biggest fan of the protagonist in Persona 3 out of all the things that I love about that game, the protagonist wasn't one, but the female protagonist that they added for Persona 3 Portable, she actually had like a personality to her and she actually was kind of a fun character. So I was like, oh, okay, that's definitely an improvement. So yeah, if there was one version of Persona 3 to play, I'd probably go with the portable version, but they are both so different from each other that it's not a bad idea to actually play both of them. Next up, I mentioned Darkstalkers earlier as one of those franchises that people absolutely love and yet Capcom is never going to bring back. Well, you know what's another franchise that people absolutely love but Capcom is never going to bring back? Power Stone. This game is so insanely fun. It's like a party fighting game. Except that now that it's going to be on your Vita, you can't really use it in a big multiplayer format. But still, even as a single player game, it is super fun and they put out the Power Stone Collection on the PSP, and you can play that on the Vita. Did they put it out on anything else? No! So if you ever want to check out Power Stone and you have a Vita, well, it's either this or you decide to find a Dreamcast somewhere. Next up is a really obscure RPG series that I played when it originally came out and I fell in love with it. 
And I didn't even know that it got PSP re-release until now, but it did, and I'm very happy to say that now you can once again play Monica Mia. This is a game where you go to a school for alchemist, and you meet a bunch of other students, and you get to grow closer to them, and then you take what you learn in alchemy school, and you go out there and you fight monsters, and yeah, it's just a really fun, charming saying, really likable characters, but also the alchemy system is really interesting where you actually get to combine stuff to create stronger weapons. I had a ton of fun just mixing and matching and seeing what I could come up with. Yeah, this is one of those RPG series that no one ever really mentions, but I remember when I originally played this all those years ago, had a blast with this thing. So if it holds up at all like my nostalgia tells me it does, I would totally recommend checking this out. Last thing I'm going to mention about the PSP real quick, again, there's so many good PSP games, but I can't cover them all, so let's just cover this one real quick. If you are a fan of Ratchet and Clank, and you're a fan of Jack and Daxter, both of those games got PSP spinoffs. Jack and Daxter got Daxter, which if you know uh, Jack and Daxter 2, you go into the future, and when you land in the future, Jack gets kidnapped, and Daxter spends like years trying to break him out. This is the story of Daxter when he was by himself, just trying to break Jack out. Yeah, super fun game, reviewed incredibly well, so I feel pretty confident in saying that it still holds, the test of t holds up to the test of time. And then Ratchet and Clank got Secret Agent Clank. Didn't review quite as well as Daxter did, but still had a lot of people enjoying this one. And also, it's Clank. I love Clank. Who doesn't want to play a game that's just Clank? Okay, let's go ahead and talk about some games that are only available on the PlayStation Vita. And again, these are games that they're not the best PlayStation Vita games. Not at all. They are just the games that as soon as this store goes down, either you won't be able to find them anymore, or if you do find a physical version, it's going to be really hard to track that down and it's probably going to cost you a whole lot. The first game that I'm going to bring up is Muramasa Rebirth. This is a remake of a game that originally came out on the Wii and it's by the same people out there who made like Odin Sphere. Uh, they did, oh God, what was that one from last year that was so incredibly good? Uh, 13 Sentinels. Yeah, you know the art style that those games have? This was really the first game that they made that made a lot of people pay attention to that art style. And it is this gorgeous side-scrolling game. And I just found out that it got a Vita re-release as I was researching for this video. And I am so happy to learn this because I remember when this game originally came out on the Wii, I kept looking at that game on the Wii thinking this thing looks amazing and I want to play it, but I didn't have the money to play it back then. So I am really happy to know that it does actually exist now on the Vita. So I want to make sure that all of you knew it as well. And yes, it does have a physical release. That physical release now goes for a lot of money. So if you want to buy this for cheap or at least cheaper, buy it now digitally while you can. Next up, this is a weird one. The game is Orishika Tainted Bloodline. This is a dungeon crawling RPG game in which you play as the members of this clan that were killed and now you're brought back to life, but you can only come back to life for two years, but you can still have children, but your children are like full grown adults but they can only live for two years as well. So it's one of those games that takes place over the course of many generations as your family seeks revenge for the people that killed you. Yeah, the plot is really, really weird. But what this comes down to is that essentially it is a dungeon crawling RPG, as I mentioned, but it's got time mechanics in there. So essentially you've got two years and time passes very quick in here. But in, those, but in those two years, you have to achieve certain goals in order to get closer to achieving your overall goal of gain revenge, and you keep getting these stat boosts and these new abilities, but then you can pass those stat boosts and abilities down to your children, and then they can pass it down to their children. So if you're one of those people out there who likes games in which you have to really consider time, in which you have to think about, okay, at this particular time, this thing is going to happen. So I've got this much time before that happens in order to achieve these things. So then I can have that happen. And then I can have this happen later on in the future with my next generation of fighters out there. If you enjoy strategizing games like those, then yeah, check out Orishiga. It's a game that it got a physical release over in Japan. I don't think it got a physical release here in America. I think it's only digital. And if it did get a physical release, I couldn't find any copies of it, so it would be really hard to track down. So if this sounds interesting to you, check it out now. 
Next up, two games that, as I said, these are not the best Vita games out there. And these next two games are going to make that very, very obvious. Mobile Suit Gundam Extreme vs. Force. I'll be real with you guys. I don't know anything about this game. Like, at all. I just found out that it exists as I was researching for this video, but what I found out is that this is a Mobile Suit Gundam game that only exists digitally in the West. Over in Japan, it did get a physical release, but in America, it only came out digitally. I did research the reviews for it, and the reviews are not great. They are hovering around like the 50-50, like, eh, it's okay. And you might be wondering why I'm recommending it then. The reason why I'm recommending it is because I know Mobile Suit Gundam fans. And I know that fans of Mobile Suit Gundam love to play Mobile Suit Gundam games. I have met those people out there who are such fans of Mobile Suit Gundam, they will play any game even if they know it's bad. They just want to play every Mobile Suit Gundam game. So for you, Mr. or Mrs. Mobile Suit Gundam fan who wants to play every Mobile Suit Gundam game, I feel like you really need to know there is a Vita exclusive Mobile Suit Gundam game that only exists digitally, so as soon as the store shuts down, you're not going to be able to buy it anymore. And in that same vein, Silent Hill Book of Memories. Okay, again, I want to remind everyone, these are not the best Vita games. Because even though I have not played a ton of Silent Hill games, even I know Silent Hill Book of Memories is not a good game. I've seen the reviews, I've heard all the problems with it, I've even seen the gameplay and it doesn't look that interesting. Silent Hill Book of Memories takes all the great stuff from the Silent Hill franchise and tries to boil it down to a dungeon crawler. And I've seen the gameplay, it doesn't even look like a good dungeon crawler. So why on earth am I bringing it up in this video? Well, it's because, just like with the Mobile Suit Gundam fans, I know that there are Silent Hill fans out there who say, even if it's a bad game, I want to experience it. I love Silent Hill, so I want to play everything Silent Hill related. So even if it's bad, I want to check it out just so I can say that I have. And if you are one of those people out there, if you are a Silent Hill fan to the point where you want to check out everything, if you in your mind have a Silent Hill retrospective plan one day, and you want to be able to say to someone, yes, I have played every Silent Hill game, this one is Vita exclusive, and at the moment, digitally, it's 30 bucks. Physically, it's over 100. So if you do think to yourself, I want to play every Silent Hill game, even though I know this one is bad, wouldn't you rather pay only $30 rather than $100 for it? I'm just saying, I'm just gonna put that thought in your head right now. Just something for you to think about between now and August. Next up, Soul Sacrifice, specifically Soul Sacrifice Delta. This is an action game. It's a lot of like hacking and slashing. It's dark fantasy stuff. It reviewed incredibly well. It's one of the best reviewed Vita exclusive games. Now, the original version of this, Soul Sacrifice, does exist physically, and I looked it up, and it's not that expensive. So if you want to get Soul Sacrifice, you don't have to get it now. It's going physically for about as much as it is going digitally. However, the game reviewed so well that they tried to give it like a second wind of sales by releasing Soul Sacrifice Delta, which was an enhanced version with additional content in there. And apparently this did work because again, I did review the scores of all of these games online to know what I should and should not recommend. Soul Sacrifice Delta got even better scores. It reviewed even better than the original Soul Sacrifice. This is, as I said, one of the highest reviewed Vita exclusive games out there. And Soul Sacrifice Delta, the enhanced version, only came out digitally. So if you don't really care about the enhanced edition and you think, eh, one day I'll get to it. Like I said, the physical version goes for about as much as it does digitally. So you're fine there. But if you do think to yourself, well, everyone says it's really good. Maybe I should check out that enhanced edition that's only available digitally. And the final game that I am going to spotlight, Touch My Katamari. Listen, what exactly do I need to say here? It's a Katamari Damacy game. If you know Katamari Damacy, you know what this game is. And you know if you are a fan. The Katamari Damacy fans, they know what they like. I don't really have to try and sell them on a Katamari Damacy game. 
but touch my Katamari, it is Vita exclusive. And considering that it uses the touchpad on the Vita, it probably will not be ported to anything else. Maybe one day they'll figure out a way to put it on the Switch or something, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that. So just like with some of the other franchises that I have mentioned, if you're one of those people out there that say, I love the Katamari franchise and I want to play all the Katamari games, touch my Katamari, only available on the Vita. But there you go, holy cow. I believe we have covered over 50 different games that you should check out. This, uh, wow, yeah, final thoughts here. There's a lot of great stuff that is about to be lost on the PlayStation Store. And I already got into this earlier, but yeah, it's really kind of a crap move. This really stinks. As I said, if they want to just delete this because they need the server space, well, that would be cheap and sleazy, but man, at least I would be able to understand from a money standpoint why they're doing it. But no, they're still going to have the servers up and running to hold all this information, so that way you guys can continue to download the games. So why on earth are they going to take away the store? Why are they going to take away the thing that allows them to continue making money off this stuff? It's just crazy to me, and it makes no sense. And this is coming from somebody who in the big Xbox PlayStation Wars was always firmly on Team PlayStation. But looking around and doing the research for this list and seeing how many games are available on the PlayStation and on the Xbox, and then seeing how PlayStation is about to cut away your access to it. Meanwhile, Xbox not only will allow you to continue buying these games, Almost all of their games that I mention on this list, or other games that I research while making this list, are actually backwards compatible on the Xbox Series S, on their latest console. You can still play them. Yeah, Xbox is winning right now. They are absolutely winning. In fact, Xbox still even does like sales on this stuff. PlayStation hasn't had any sales on the PlayStation Vita or on the PlayStation 3 games in years now at this point. Meanwhile, you know, Xbox, you can still get sales, you can still get discounts on this stuff, you can still get them as part of Game Pass and play them for free. So yeah, it is just insane to me how PlayStation is just going to take away people's ability to access these games. And I'm talking right now just as a consumer, just as someone who likes to play these games, but I am also a fan of video games from a historical standpoint. I am also a fan of just knowing the history of these games and being able to access that history and being able to keep talking about these games and have them stick around for future generations. I love the idea of someone a decade in the future looking back at one of these old PS3 games and going, oh, wow, that looks cool. I'm going to check that out. I love the idea of that being a thing. And the fact that that will not be a thing anymore is just really upsetting. It feels like a chunk of gaming history is about to disappear. There's really no reason for this. Other than I feel like maybe the people who are running PlayStation, you know, we've heard comments come from them before in which they say, we don't understand why anyone would play an older console game. The guy who's in charge of the marketing over at PlayStation, he's made those comments before. Yeah, it's really kind of disgusting to hear somebody who runs a video game company saying they don't know why people would play old video games. And I don't know, maybe end of the day, putting people in charge of a gaming company just because they know how to make money wasn't the right decision. Maybe we should put people who, you know, like video games in charge of video game companies. It's a crazy idea, but maybe by doing that, we would continue to, you know, have access to video games. It's odd. It's a crazy idea. I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the crazy one on this. As I said, if it was up to me, I would have someone at PlayStation figure out a way to make it so that you could download software onto your PS4 and your PS5 that would allow you to have access to your PS3 game library, but I don't know. Seems like a crazy idea. Maybe in the 21st century, in the year 2021, when we have so much technology at our fingertips and everything is so easily accessible, there's really not much of an excuse for why we can't just be able to play games online. If there's a game that is available digitally, why shouldn't I be able to thrust my hand out with a fistful of cash in there and say, shut up and take my money, and then the company can take my money and then I can legally play that game? 
feels like that would be a way for everyone to benefit, but I don't know. I'm just crazy. I'm just making stuff up over here. Anywho, let me know in the comments down below how you feel about all this, and also if there is a game that you feel like everyone should know about on the PS3, whether it be a digital-only game, or a game that is just more easily accessible on the PS3, or if it's just a game that you love from the PS3 and the Vita, and you want more people to play it, even if it is easily accessible physically, then go ahead, share that down below as well. Thanks everybody for tuning in. I'm too sad thinking about all this to have an outro. Bye.